guys, we're Dom and Jesso and we're self-converting this Ford Transit van into our dream home on wheels. In this episode, we'll be installing our electrical system and we'll be going through a complete step-by-step -step of how to do it. So we were kindly gifted the whole of our Enerdrive electrical system through Caravan RV Camping, which is super awesome and we're really grateful. So thanks for that, guys. Yeah, so after doing some research online, we come across the Enerdrive e-system boards. Found that they were really simple and easy to install. We had a look through and found the ultimate DIY kit which is perfect for us in the van as we can customize the layout however we want it. So it comes with the main distribution board which is the main part of all the eSIM range. So there's three options to choose as your distribution board. You can get one without a battery monitor, you can get one with an ePro Plus battery monitor or you can get one with a Simmering battery monitor. So we went with the Simmering quad shunt battery monitor so that way we can measure all our battery levels, water tank levels and some other loads like the lights and the fridge and stuff. So it also comes with a 40 amp DC to DC charger. This allows you to charge your house battery from your starter battery. And it also comes with a 2000 watt inverter, which allows you to run 240 volt appliances like laptop chargers or camera chargers. So to complete the rest of our setup, we got two 190 watt solar panels as well as a 200 amp hour lithium battery. So we're gonna get straight into it now and I'm super excited for this episode. So yeah, let's, let's go. It. So before you start your electrical, there's a lot of planning and preparation involved. So here's what we've done prior to installing our electricals. I would recommend having your roof racks installed so you can mount your solar panels and your subfloor and wall framing installed so you can mount your electrical system and have something to screw into. Also, you should cut out any big holes from the van like the windows, roof vent, gas box and hot water system as these are permanent modifications to the van that you will need to work around. Now you're ready to start on your electricals. So your first step would be to list every single electrical that's going to be in the van so then you'll need to figure out how much power all of these electricals will consume you can do this by downloading the user manuals online you're basically looking for how many amps each appliance draws you can also find online formulas to calculate how much power you'll need now you're ready to purchase your power system so going off the requirements you need you can find batteries charges and solar panels to fit your needs for example we chose a 200 amp hour lithium battery charged by 380 watts of solar and a 40 amp DC to DC. Next you can start mapping out where it's all going to fit in your van. You can draw diagrams and then you can choose which routes you want to run all your cables. So now you can measure the lengths of where your cables will run to determine the cable size you need to purchase and you can calculate the fusing for each circuit. You can do this by going online and research the formulas or if you've bought an Enerdrive system you can contact their customer support to help you out. Now you've completed all of your planning, it's time to go into your local electronic shop and buy all of the connections, fusing and cables that you need. Here is everything that we used in our setup. Now you can start running wires. It's always a good idea to run them in conduit as it protects the cables from rubbing on the metal in your van. Finally, you're ready for phase two. Start by mounting your solar panels. I drilled six mil holes into my pre-mounted roof racks and used four M6 Allen key bolts per panel. To reduce vibration, I placed a three mil rubber strip between the panels and roof racks, then secured them tightly. Next, we moved on to creating a wooden panel that we'll use to mount all of our electricals. We used a sheet of 15mm plywood and cut it to shape. This is why it's important to have already completed the big modifications to the van so that you can get precise measurements. All right, so now we've got our panel cut. We're going to lay out our components of all the electrical system. Once we're happy with the design, we're just gonna trace around with a pencil, mark it all out, and then start mounting the components to the panel. So under our seat, I'm gonna put the main distribution board. That way you can see it and access it. And the same as the DC to DC, the kill switches and some fuses. And then under the bed, that's where I'm gonna put the inverter, nice and tucked away. You can still access it from the garage if need be. So. Let's go ahead and do that. So once we decided on the configuration of our electricals, we traced around each component with a pencil. Then we began drilling out holes for our cables to fit through, and we gave the panel a sand and a few coats of paint before mounting it.
So we finished our mounting panel. We just made it out of plywood. We cut out all the different sized holes for the cables to run through and then we just painted it black just so it looks a bit neater and cleaner. Yep, so now we just got to mount it to the framing, pull all the cables through and mount the components to it. So we started pulling all of our cables through the panel. I also labeled each cable as we were doing this so we knew what each one was. We also organized the back of the panel by using P clips and zip ties as there was around 80 cables in total. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't drill any screws into them. All right, so now we get to mount our components. First up is the distribution board. So we went ahead and started mounting our power distribution module as well as our DC to DC charger. When we were screwing these in, we made sure to avoid the cables in the back by shortening the length of the screws themselves and organizing the back of the board. Then it was looking like this, so it was time to start cutting the cables to the correct lengths. We cut crimped and heat shrinked each cable so that we could connect them to the components. This job took a whole day in itself, we just kept repeating this same process for all of the 80 cables. So the following day all of our cables had been connected and we also connected the battery and then it was time to switch it on and see if all of our hard work had been worth it. And just like that we were super relieved to know that we'd done everything correctly and it was all working. And then it was time to fit the final piece of the puzzle which was mounting our inverter. By Australian regulations our inverter does have to be installed by a licensed electrician so we're not allowed to take part in any of that installation process. So here we just mounted it onto the panel. Hey guys, so now we've finally put together our whole electrical system. So I'm just going to give you a rundown of everything that we've got. So let's get into it. So this is our power distribution module. So this module also allows you to buy inverters, chargers and batteries separate, allowing you to customize your layout however you need be. Alright, so I'll just go through the board. So basically our power comes in here. This is the positive bus bar. This is a 250 circuit breaker which will protect your inverter. Then you've got a 200 amp circuit breaker which covers the whole distribution board. And then up here you've got the positive bus bar which goes into MIDI fuse holders. Now these will protect your loads that go through your shunt. There's two shunts on here which work with the Simarine battery monitor system but I'll go through them in detail. And then down here is the negative bus bar. So basically all your, all your connections come to, to this one spot and it's just in a single central location. Alright so next up is our tried and tested 40 amp DC to DC charger. It also is a MPPT solar controller which is really great because it's just a one stop shop for your charging connections. It's just a set and forget system where it automatically detects when your car turns on and it'll change to your DC to DC charger and then when you turn your car off it'll change back to the solar and charge from your solar. And it also configures to any battery chemistry including lithium which is what we're running. So on top of our van we have two 190 watt solar panels fixed onto the roof and these are wired in parallel. Our solar panels are built to last in high efficiency and they're also one of Caravan RV Camping's best selling solar panels. So down here we've got our Enerdrive 200 amp hour BTEC lithium battery. So I've got ours in a box which isn't really necessary for our situation so I'll just touch on that. So basically late last year new regulations came in for lithium batteries being stored in a habitable space. So basically what that means is if you have a 240 volt plug socket on the outside of your vehicle so you can connect to shore power then you're considered a portable connectable electrical 
installation. Since we've opted for not being able to connect to shore power, so we're just going completely off grid, powered by solar and DC to DC, we've sort of found a bit of a loophole to avoid these new regulations. So we don't actually have to have our battery in a box um, as the regulations don't apply to us. In saying that, we have opted to put ours in a battery box just, just for storage. So I can have storage down here under my seat and just have the battery hitting away. So if you're looking to do an install of a new lithium battery system make sure you look up the new regulations and see if it applies to you but yeah but if you're just going for an off-grid setup and don't have that 240 volt on the outside of your van then it doesn't apply to you so this battery is equipped with a LIFE PO4 battery management system that can monitor and optimize each prismatic cell within normal battery operation. It will protect the battery pack from overcharge, over discharge, overheating and short circuit. BMS helps to ensure safe and accurate operation of the battery. It also comes with a five year warranty. You can also connect it through Bluetooth onto your phone through the Enerdrive app so you can manage the status of your battery. So on top here it's got a flat battery reset button and it's powerful enough to run our 2000 watt inverter. So we also have our 2000 watt true sine wave inverter. On the side here it comes with a plug socket, a USB output as well as RCD protection and it also comes with a relocatable control panel. So basically we can take out the side piece here and connect a wire so we can have our control panel relocated somewhere else in the van so we can turn on and off the inverter. So as part of the Australian standards and regulation when converting a van into a motorhome, the 240 volt has to be done by a licensed electrician. So at this stage, our inverter is not connected. We're waiting for our electrician to come out next week and safely install this so our electrical system will be up and running. This is our battery monitor. It's a Simarin Pico battery monitor. It's a screen that you can view all, all your stats. Basically how it works is you run loads through your so on this one, this is the SCQ50. It's got four individual load monitors, which can have 50 amp per circuit. So I've only got three connected at the moment. One's gonna be our switch panel, which is gonna measure all our loads of our appliances. Then I've got one for our fuse block, which is gonna have all our loads of our lights. And then our third one is the LPG tank sensor, which is gonna tell us how much gas we got left in our tank. And I've got a spare one here if I wanna add anything in the future. Future. So down here we've got the SC303 shunt and this one's great for measuring any high amperages. So you can run a total of 300 amps through this one, which is great for high powered loads like your battery or inverter or induction cooktops. So we've just got our battery plugged into this and our inverter so we can measure them loads and monitor it all on this one screen. So if you're looking to put a power system in your camper van as well, the team at Caravan RV Camping are able to go through your application and see which system best suits your needs and help you decide which one to choose. For us, we went for the Ultimate DIY kit because of our limited space. We wanted something that was really customizable and so that we can travel off grid as well. So it's perfect for us and I'm so happy that we went with that. If you choose the Enerdrive brand, you get access to 24 seven customer support and a five year warranty on your setup. Even when you're first starting your setup and you got questions on what wire size to use or what fuse size to use, you just give them a buzz and they'll help you out. And if you're traveling on the road and something goes wrong or you're doing a bit of troubleshooting, you just give them a quick call and they'll help you with any queries or any problems that you have so yeah also if you're interested in purchasing the entire bundle of the Enerdrive range that we've used in our setup then you can actually do that through caravan rv camping and we've got our own bundle link which i'll leave in the description of this video check out that link if you're interested in using everything that we've got in our setup so thanks for watching guys hopefully this video has helped you understand the process of how to do the electrical system in your van it's a lot to sort of to go through and and get your head around so if you found any value in that video like and subscribe drop us a comment if you got any questions uh thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one see you on the next one